afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, informational webinar this afternoon on uh, our Facing Change Initiative, Advancing Museum Board Diversity and Inclusion. My name is Dr. Tommy Matthews. I am the Director of Inclusion for the American Alliance of Museums. I'm very, very excited to be on the line with you uh, this afternoon. We're going to go ahead uh, and get started. Uh, some folks will be joining. Um, everyone is muted, um, and we are actively monitoring the chat box. So as we continue in the conversation, um, we will be grouping questions and doing our best uh, to answer them. Um, but when we get to the end of the presentation, I will also be giving contact information. Um, we are um, encouraging um, and will enjoy having conversations um, with folks who would like to go more in depth about any uh, thing they think is particular to their own application. So this is our welcome and our overview. We are very, very excited about this initiative that we launched. We are very, very excited um, that a number of you have already raised your hands and said we want to participate. We've been talking about this space. We're excited about this space. Um, and we're looking forward to some additional engagement uh, and technical support in helping to think through uh, diversity, in diversity and inclusion at the highest levels of everything um, that we do. Um, and so we've got three folks uh, in the room that I want to point out. Uh, Laura Lott, our president and CEO, will be giving us greetings uh, in just a moment. I've already introduced myself. And also Brooke Leonard, our chief of staff. I want to acknowledge um, Anthony and Ali, who are also joining us uh, as support. Um, but this is also a demonstration of uh, the fact that the full leadership of the American Alliance of Museums is behind this program and very excited and very anxious uh, to move forward. Um, and with that, uh, I will turn over uh, the overview and the, the welcome to our president and CEO. And I'm going to fast forward to a slide that has the mission and the vision on it, but before I do, I, I must actually point out that for those of you who have had the opportunity to meet um, our uh, next, perhaps, uh, president and CEO of someone in the museum field, there is Minnie Laura um, and uh, her family are there uh, in one of our wonderful and amazing museums. And with that, I turn it over to Laura. Great, thanks, Tanya. And uh, I just want to echo Tanya's uh, welcome to everyone on the phone uh, and her uh, sentiment that we at the American Alliance of Museums are really um, thrilled to have the opportunity to uh, work on diversity, equity, accessibility, and inclusion issues, um, particularly at the board level. Um, the, uh, there's been a lot of investment in our field around uh, building a pipeline or pathway of uh, more diverse uh, candidates in our field, and we feel that this uh, uh, work at the highest levels of our organization to set the tone to make um, strategic and financial and other decisions that support uh, more inclusive cultures in our um, museum. Uh, as well as boards that better reflect the communities that we are all charged with serving in our respective communities. Uh, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to work at that level and, uh, and think it's very complementary to the, the other pipeline or pathway work that's happening in our field. Um, I will also, on behalf of the AAM board, um, say that the, the, the board uh, of the Alliance is, is thrilled uh, to be taking on this work. We have been uh, doing this work ourselves with the AM board over uh, several years, um, and uh, we'll be going through sort of alongside of the participating museums in this project, a parallel process um, as well. And so the, the, on, on the board's behalf and on behalf of our funders, I will just say that uh, we are we're thrilled to have this opportunity and, and commend you all for raising your hand at this point. You've already demonstrated uh, your leadership in our field uh, by uh, considering this, this opportunity to um, be one of our inaugural um, museums uh, in this work and to sort of set an example for the rest of the field, the, the AM board and our, our funding partners. Um, I think we'll be, um, we'll be watching closely all the uh, work that we do, taking lessons learned uh, to apply to the broader field. So 
with that, I know we have a lot to cover, so I will turn it back over to Tanya to get to the heart of what I'm sure your many questions are about uh, uh, what, uh, what this program will include. Thank you. So we're going to start uh, a little bit at the beginning. I think just a couple of slides that will help us remember how we got to uh, where we are uh, and why we're heading in this direction um, in terms of AAM's own strategic plan as well as this uh, large initiative. Um, we as uh, museum leaders are often talking about organizations which have the right people at the house, different and complementary backgrounds and experiences. Uh, we are now at a point in our language where we include uh, diversity and, and inclusion as a component of sustainability for our museum, as well as um, excellence in the way that we serve our constituents. So many of you, thank you for participating uh, in the Leading with Intent uh, survey, nationwide survey and report that we put out in 2017, um, which had a lot of good information about where we are and where we want to be. Um, we found that uh, museums, along with nonprofit board partners, and for those of you that were looking at the corporate reports coming out at the time, we still have governing boards that are overwhelmingly uh, white uh, and often also skew towards male uh, and their composition as well as their leadership. Uh, despite that leaning, we're also finding that museum directors and board chairs believe that diversity and inclusion are important. And then a significant uh, portion of us across the board are dissatisfied with the racial diversity in particular uh, that is happening on our board. And that was part of uh, what helped to compel the American Alliance of Museums to think through how we could support the field uh, in this gap between aspirations uh, and practice. Part of that, we worked with um, some consultants um, and our previous uh, director of inclusion to think about what are the essential components of being able to do this work, um, and that was the Facing Change Report, where we talked about um, the five particular aspects of successful DEAI um, work integrated at the institution level. Um, and as you, some of you recall, um, and some of you may be seeing for the first time, it goes all the way from the personal work that we must do um, to not letting definitions hinder us. Um, I can say I was in the room when we spent countless hours trying to figure out how we were going to define inclusion and diversity, um, equity, and accessibility. And while that is a very, very important and critical conversation, it is often a way of allowing ourselves to get stuck and so part of it is coming towards common language that meets the common intent, um, and then getting into the work that needs to be done. Inclusion, as we mentioned earlier, uh, still central to effectiveness and sustainability of museums. Systematic change is vital to long-term and genuine progress. Uh, and empowered, inclusive leadership is essential at all levels of the organization. And this is where um, the current Facing Change initiative that is specifically focusing on board diversity is actually unique. As we think about the way that museums in particular interface with these conversations around DEAI, we think of three levels. We've got the audience engagement level. There is still work to be done there, but we are doing significant work in responding to the changes uh, in our audience, the audience that is coming to us and the audience that we want to see, learning ways to make welcome inside our institution. The second level is through art, exhibition, and collections. We're also doing some very strategic work, and I mean this uh, in terms of individual museums and uh, the work that's being showcased at the annual meeting, where I'm thinking through more engaging exhibitions, more diverse exhibitions, more diverse artists, thinking about the way we collect, how we collect, and how we steward items and, and artifacts from uh, our history. So those two uh, categories of DEAI, um, AEM has previously uh, spent some time in that space and thinking through this at a sector level, and we will continue to do so. But what became clear um, when we did the Leading with Intent report is that we actually also needed to 
focus on the third level, which is executive leadership and governance. Um, and thinking through how we as executive leaders and we that uh, participate in governance structures can also actively and deliberately participate in the transformation that is happening around DEAI in our field. So in a nutshell, the overview of the initiative that we have been talking about and talking through is a three-year initiative that began in this January. Uh, five cities across the nation, which have been um, selected, um, 50 museums uh, thoroughly engaged in five that collective, and then being supported by 10 fellows who will act as coaches to each of the museums as we work through the program. Uh, so, of course, it has been announced that our five cities uh, span the country. Um, and in advance of some of our frequently asked questions, what do we mean by cities? We mean your willingness to drive through, drive to the central location. Uh, we're targeting um, a, a radius, um, which we believe is within a two and a half, two hour drive, um, because without wanting to be a burden. Um, but we are open and flexible as museums to their own ability to in some of our group convenings. Uh, the five cities are the uh, San Francisco and Oakland Bay Area, uh, Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul, Houston, uh, the Chicago area, and Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, so we are spread out all over the country, and in each of those city communities, uh, 10 museums uh, will be selected, uh, leading us to our total 50 museums. As I move forward in the presentation, you will see me begin to refer to museum communities of learning. So as we think through the 10 museums that are relatively co-located, those become our museum communities of learning. So for the 50 museums, we're going to be providing intensive, deliberate work to educate, coach, and steward our museum boards in broadening racial and ethnic diversity. One of the things that has been brought up quite clearly is that the D, the E, the A, and the I are all equally important to the work that AAM and that each of our museum members must do uh, in terms of being truly sustainable and truly inclusive. Um, but in the conversation of, while we do need to start somewhere, where should we start? We leaned towards uh, the leading with intent report and the other feedback that we were getting from the field is one of the places where we would like to start is around racial and ethnic uh, diversity and inclusion. And the goal of the program is to be able to use these experiences to educate ourselves and our constituents to be able to grow and translate that work across every aspect of the EAI in the work that we do. A quick overview of some key uh, program elements that all of the museums will be experiencing as they participate as a member of a museum community of learning. Sponsored specialized DEAI training specific to nonprofit boards and governance. Part of that is going to be DEAI training, cultural competency, implicit bias, some very practical ideas about how to engage uh, within our groups and our organizations, but also a nice look at are there any structures literally organizational structures within our governance that actually help or hinder in our journey um, to include and to welcome um, more diverse candidates into our midst. Exceptional network building and national engagement opportunities. We actually believe this is it's important. We as museums are communities of lifelong learning and we learn from each other. Uh, and so I will talk a little bit uh, later about the convenings that we will do uh, in each city region, and also that we would do as a whole at the American Alliance of Museums meeting uh, in particular years of yeah, the grant and the engagement. And for this, what may be um, unique and exciting is, um, I will say that uh, CEOs and other museum executive professionals do often have time to build networks and come together um, but we don't often make that space for our board members as often um, as we would like to as well. Uh, and this program will provide that opportunity uh, for that constituency. Sponsored Board Diversity Plan Workshop. It is one of the ultimate outcomes of the program. Um, and it will actually be working alongside AAM, uh, the 
fellow coach that is uh, particularly working with your museum as a member of the program, as well as the AI consultants um, and board governance consultants that people have working alongside of us. Elevated profile and exposure on AAM platforms. Mind you, we are very excited. <laughs> so, as you have seen, some of you may have gotten perhaps uh, more than your fair share of uh, announcements about the Facing Change Initiative, and we will continue that. Um, this work is important, the work is exciting, not only for our sector, but for other sectors. And so, we do look forward to the opportunity of profiling members of the museum community learning um, and talking about the experiences and the learning um, with the hope that we are translating, uh, inspiring, and motivating uh, other museums to also step up to the table and uh, do this work. Um, early sponsored access to the diversity board matching um, portal. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, AAM will be pulling together um, a board matching portal um, and initially, we will be focusing, obviously, on the five cities that are in the museum community of learning, trying to bring diverse candidates who are interested in our missions and in our goals. We understand that it's critical to have board members who are committed and who are talented, but who also very much match our mission and our vision of our organization and who they want to be. And so AAM is going to uh, step in and, and take on creating um, a diversity matching portal. Uh, and what will be also be unique is that um, board candidates that are uh, participating in the portal will also be receiving board training, um, some basic training in how to be um, a strong uh, and contributing uh, board member. Um, so uh, we're also offering that uh, as part of this. And so the 50 museums of the museum communities of learning will actually have early access um, and be part of, of the community that helps us pilot uh, and refine this offering. Candid conversation with our founding funding partners, um, the Mellon Foundation, the Walton Foundation, and uh, the Ford Foundation. I'm all equally very excited um, and pulling alongside us um, and they have agreed to engage with our museum um, as we bring ourselves together uh, for our larger convening. Um, and we do understand that this is very critical. Um, as nonprofit organizations, we, of course, we serve and we do very, very good work. Um, and part of what um, can help us is when those who are also funding us and supporting us in big and small levels are fully aligned to our mission and our vision and, and pushing um, and moving us, us forward. Um, as nonprofit organizations, we often do have to make choices. And critically and clearly, often our funders are part of the choices that we make. And so we are excited that the foundations have committed uh, to spending time uh, with our cohort. So those are the, uh, the broad elements of uh, the program. There, there are also some other interesting elements and, and ways we will be engaged. Um, but those are um, the six key things, um, I think, to keep in mind um, as we jump into this space. I want to thank folks who sent questions uh, beforehand, and we even have some questions that are coming through the chat box now. And what we found is there were sort of largely eight categories of questions that folks had, and so we wanted to be sure to address that um, here in our presentation. The first and most obvious is around eligibility and selection um, criteria. Of course, the application is now live, and you can get very detailed information about what we're looking for um, in the preamble uh, to that. But there were some questions around um, the different types of governance structures, um, organizations that also have multiple museums. How are we considering governance? The, uh, the rule of thumb in terms of eligibility around governance is simply that it is an independent governing body, right? And so you can be a board that is actually governing several sites across a state or a community, and one of those sites is actually uh, in the community that we're specifically targeting. Uh, it's more so about um, the ability of the board to govern itself, 
to um, think through its own bylaws, to not make its own nominations from membership. That's pretty much the extent of eligibility when it comes to um, sort of board structure. We also had several questions from culturally specific museums. We strongly encourage applications from culturally specific museums. Um, and that consideration is uh, the same as the consideration for a museum that is as specific as, say, a house museum, or just looking at a particular moment in time of history or a particular type of art. Um, if you believe that diversity, equity, accessibility, and inclusion is important to your work in whatever context that is, we're very interested um, in engaging uh, those types of uh, museums in the process. Uh, and we are very sensitive and very excited about the diversity of the cohort that we will be able to have because we are the American Alliance of Museums. Uh, and the broader our cohort, uh, the more translatable we believe that the lessons will be. And so when it comes to eligibility and selection, that's what we are sort of looking for. The independence of the board, um, we are subject matter agnostic uh, in terms of museums. So that includes museum type is our A to Z definition, from art museums to zoos, to botanical gardens, to historic houses, to science centers, uh, in terms of thinking through that. We had another set of very insightful questions uh, that related to how this process is going to intersect with the continuum of excellence. Um, uh, that's for folks who actually read the full press release. Um, and so, yes, uh, part of the Facing Change Initiative, because we're going through sustainability um, as well as governance, DEAI. Uh, will soon be embedded into the continuum of excellence from the pledge through the core documents and ultimately to accreditation. Part of our work ongoing right now is that a task force has been convened. Um, the Facing Change Task Force has been convened. Uh, and over the next eight months, they will be having conversations and produce guidance for AAM in terms of how we should specifically do and consider um, including DAI into our continuum of excellence. Um, and we expect uh, the beginnings of that rollout to begin towards the end of this process around 2021. Um, museums who are in the museum cohort of learning will actually get early access and early guidance into how to engage with the continuum of excellence. One of our aspirational goals um, is to be able to uh, keep up with the speed at which we know our museums will move. Um, and having portions of the continuum of excellence available um, to our museum community of learning uh, to sign up for, to take advantage of, um, as well as to be ahead, um, so to speak, um, as the rollout of DAI into our continuum uh, takes place. We also had a grouping of questions, um, three and four, very close together, logistics and participation expectations. So the initial convening of the Museum Community of Learning will be this late summer, early fall, August and September. We remain flexible on those dates because based on who the Museum Community of Learning are and the museums that are included, we want to have a certain amount of flexibility as we understand when uh, board meetings are occurring. Uh, and we are mindful of the timing uh, in terms of that. So we have uh, sort of seasons, target seasons in terms of when we will begin to engage. What museums engage in the museum communities of learning can expect is in each year, 2019, 2020, and 21, there will be one large museum community of learning in a particular museum community. Therefore, all of the 10 museums in the Chicago cohort will convene together, all of the museums in the Jackson, Mississippi cohort will convene together, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and those will be at single day uh, convenings, full day, single full day convenings, in which there will be a mix of group and individual work by the museum. Um, these are the days, of course, when the coaches uh, will be there to work with their museums in person, as well as uh, members of the DAI firm that have helped us design of the learning curriculum and debriefing on any assessment. 
So that is expected to happen once annually uh, in the late summer, early fall. In addition to that, uh, there is an expectation that there will be uh, two virtual uh, engagements uh, in which uh, the museums are participating in another two-hour session of tutorial, working directly with their coaches um, and with DEAI firms that are associated with our curriculum. And there is a lot of flexibility with that. That is not as a cohort, that is as an individual museum. So once the museums are selected and the coaches are assigned, those two virtual sessions where we're having um, follow-up and deep dive conversations will be specific to the museums that we are actually working with. And we are looking to work with the museums in terms of scheduling that. We understand that some members will want to schedule those meetings in conjunction with board meetings. And some members will want to schedule those as additional convenings of their board. And we remain flexible in being able to do that. Um, we expect for our uh, coaches, our fellows, to be on site with the museum during this virtual engagement. The virtual part is the engagement with the EAI experts specific to the topic being addressed. Um, the last major chunk of time is that um, the board, I'm sorry, the board chair uh, and the organizational CEO or director uh, will be asked to attend the AAM meeting. Uh, during this cycle with an open invitation to other members of the board to come as well. Uh, but there will be some deep dive work in, with what we are calling the museum champion um, for each one of our participating museums. So for example, at the annual meeting of 2020, we expect to be doing deep dives into exactly how to develop a board diversity and inclusion plan. Everything from running through templates thinking about what is very specific about your museum, your challenges, and your community as well. So those are the examples of sort of the major sort of time pools that require logistics. Throughout the entire grant process, uh, the museum, particularly the CEO and the board chair, and in some cases the nomination and governance committee chair as well, as appropriate, will have access to uh, their coach. And the coach uh, will be tasked with supporting the meantime work, uh, any activities, um, finalizing diversity and inclusion plans, working through the learning, the different curriculum modules, etc. So that is a continuous level of engagement that will happen there. But again, that is part of the program that is designed to work for each museum as an individual uh, museum. So I've talked a little bit about um, the grouping of questions around how will the museum community of learning function as a cohort. Uh, as I previously mentioned, we are lifelong learning community, uh, and we do like to work together, and um, we have actually built uh, that culture within our field. So the museums will convene together once a year, um, and the museums will be very aware and very engaged with their sister and brother uh, museums in the cohort. So there will be that level of formal engagement there. There will also be a level of formal engagement during the AAM meeting for the representatives of the museums that actually attend. We will be looking to and be very flexible as well as very curious uh, in terms of how museums choose to access each other during this process. Um, while all of the museums will be uh, different and unique and have different and unique problems um, and challenges, we also know um, that they will share with each other and shared learning. Um, we do not have criteria for how um, old or how long in existence a museum um, will be in place, so we expect some cross-learning between our veteran museums as well as our newer and younger museums as well as veteran and younger and newer leaders of those museums. So we're excited to see how the museum communities of learning themselves will take advantage of the, the function of the cohort. Leading into that, thinking through um, the DEAI training specifics and exactly how much time we are talking about here. 
So what we are looking at and approximating is eight hours of training a year. So this is going to be inclusive of the day-long convening that happens in um, the late summer and fall, right? So if you think through a half day, maybe that's four to six hours, an additional two hours in a virtual meeting. So that's in terms of, of the time chunk. Uh, what we are asking our uh, DAI firm to do is to develop um, a curriculum that both orients an organization to institutional work around DAI because Boards are actually organizations. Uh, we are communities in and of ourselves. Um, and this will include everything from exposure and assessment and cross cultural competency, uh, implicit bias, uh, welcoming other, looking at governance structures as well. And this will be stretched out over the three year um, period, with the first year really being thought of as introductory and grounding, um, and the second year being uh, thought through as tactical and institutional, so that's when you will see things like the Board Diversity and Inclusion Plan coming into place. And the third year uh, being looked at in terms of sustainability and transition. We know that healthy boards transition uh, with new members uh, and coming on at all times. Healthy organizations also transition. Uh, new visions, new programs, and so thinking through the sustainability of what has been learned and how to embed and institutionalize uh, the learnings of, and the trainings and the plans that have been created will be a critical part of that third year. Uh, but in terms of logistics, uh, we have planned for about eight hours annually uh, in terms of the way we are grouping. And in advance, we want to say thank you and acknowledge um, the boards of the museums that will be participating. While eight hours a year does not sound like much when you put it in that phrase. As we think about the way that museum boards engage with their museums, it may be eight hours a year is essentially the base commitment of, say, a board member that has four meetings a year, um, two hours at a time, plus a committee meeting. So we really do know um, that as um, museums step into this space, that they and their board members are really committing to doing some significant work, and we appreciate that. Uh, and we'll be very mindful of that. Number seven, uh, some very specific questions around, so what exactly will, will happen with the board diversity and inclusion plan all the way up to, hallelujah, you're gonna teach me how to create a board diversity and inclusion plan. So that is one of our very specific um, outcomes. And we are looking to uh, create uh, a workshop and really dig in and really engage Museums and the museum community of learning will indeed have the advantage of having a coach um, to coach them through the plan, the process, the work, um, and the development. Uh, there's a question about how long this takes. Interestingly, um, that will depend in some part uh, on the speed and cadence of some board structures. Um, we expect to have some uh, members of the museum community that are meeting and their boards may only meet three or four times a year. Um, we expect to have other members of the community where boards meet more often, or that there is a high regard for subcommittee work um, that does aggressive work in between board meetings. All of this has to do uh, in terms of how fast a board can move. But essentially, we do expect for boards to be able to have uh, board diversity and inclusion plans uh, in place uh, by the end of 2020. That is very exciting. Sounds like a ways off, but it's pretty fast in museum speak. What are the specific results and outcome expectations? Uh, in addition to, uh, of course, learning, uh, network building, uh, camaraderie, um, and uh, a shared commitment to DEAI, uh, there are two primary outcome expectations. One is the creation of the Board Diversity and Inclusion Plan. Uh, that includes full acceptance and ratification according to the museum's uh, policies around such plans. And two, uh, it will be for uh, the museums to take advantage of the learning and uh, engage uh, and add uh, two uh, additional board members who are um, diverse. Uh, and I want to be clear that part of what we will be doing with the museums in the first year, year and a half, and throughout, is thinking 
thinking through what diversity and inclusion priorities are specific to your museum because of the community uh, that you are working in. Uh, museums within our Jackson community may have different priorities in terms of thinking about the way they need to divers diversify their boards from an ethnic and racial perspective um, as compared with our organizations in San Francisco and Oakland. In the Bay Area, they may have um, a different way that they need to think through that. That is actually part of the work uh, that we will be uh, doing. Um, and in that space, uh, the word coaching rather than directing is very important. Um, we will be working with uh, museum boards to essentially uncover their own genius uh, in this space and think through how to make uh, those definitions. So those are essentially the, the two outcomes that we are actively uh, supporting. We will have the workshops and, and, and supply the training so that it is possible for every one of our participating museums to develop a board diversity and inclusion plan. We will have the training, we will have the board matching portal, we will have the opportunity and the support for every member of the um, museum community of learning to engage two additional new board members who are board members of uh, our targeted diversity. Uh, for lack of a better phrase. But while AAM is providing um, extraordinary and strategic support and coaching, we do also know that it is ultimately up to uh, the commitment uh, and drive of each one of our uh, museum and member organizations um, to actually make that happen, which brings everything full circle. We essentially have one around selection criteria, beyond independent governance, uh, and commitment, uh, what we will be looking for is that spark uh, that lets us know um, that we are talking with and working with the museum that is really committed um, to getting this, this done. Um, not because it's easy, but because it is necessary um, and it is possible. We're very excited about that. And so those were uh, sort of the major categories of questions uh, that we received. Uh, and I'm momentarily pausing because we, we do have some questions that have come in um, through our chat box um, and thinking through that. And I want to take a moment to be able to, to look at those. Very specific question about are libraries eligible to participate? And when I start this sentence off by saying I love libraries, um, but the way that we are being supported uh, in this plan um, our uh, sister organizations of libraries are not eligible to participate. Uh, that said, part of what we're trying to do is to talk through our experiences in real time in usable ways. And so we know that what we will discover will be compelling to museums, um, and we believe that what we discover will also be compelling to sister organizations such as libraries um, and other nonprofits. A uh, question specifically here asking for more detail and who should actually represent the museum at this meeting and who's required to participate. In particular, when it comes to uh, the larger convenings of the museum communities of learning that are specific to the city and to the additional training that is virtual that is specific to the museum, we have an audacious goal of everyone. <laughs> what that means is we have made room for 100% participation by the board. And so we are going to be encouraging um, and supporting our board and museum leaders in making that happen. Um, part of that is being as flexible about the dates as we can and is being as specific uh, to the museum needs as we can. In terms of who we would like to see from the executive and leadership team, clearly the CEO and the director. Um, and clearly any additional member of the leadership team that has um, strong and constant engagement with the board. And that can depend on the organization. In some organizations, there's specifically a board liaison. In some organizations, it is clearly part of the work of the development um, lead. And so those are who we specifically want to see. However, we will also encourage, if desired, uh, directors and CEOs to include their full executive team, meaning their direct reports, um, if this is a part of the space 
and, and the way we, we think of that as, as critical care. Okay, so I'm looking through um, some other additional questions. So what, uh, another logistical question, is there funding to support travel? Um, for local travel, um, there is no funding to support local travel, meaning if you're in Chicago and it's a Chicago meeting and you're driving to the meeting, you do not have that. Um, we are working through um, a limited number of stipends to actually attend um, the annual meeting uh, and anything that requires extensive travel, um, and we are working out the logistics of that as well. Um, we do not want travel to be the sole barrier um, for a museum not being able to participate, uh, and we represent museums of all sizes uh, and capacities, so we definitely want to be mindful of that. So there will be some available stipended support uh, for travel to uh, the annual meeting. Um, and uh, also note that the bulk of travel required will be local, uh, if at all. So a question on a clarification of requirement to participate in the continuum of excellence. It's so funny because it's, it's new in the way that we're talking through it. So um, let me do that from a perspective of what the continuum of excellence looks like right now. So the first step of the continuum of excellence is to take the pledge of excellence, where essentially um, museum leadership steps up and says, you know, we believe in sustainability, we believe in commitment to our mission, we believe in commitment to our audience. So the first step is simply taking the pledge of, of being aspirational uh, in our work. The second step, we have the five core documents um, that we believe that every museum should have, um, ranging from uh, the disaster plan uh, to the mission and vision statement. So we have the five core documents um, so whenever a museum is ready, they can send their five core documents to the American Alliance Museum to have them reviewed, get critiqued, and, and feedback. And that is the second step of the continuum of excellence. And of course, uh, after that, you are more than halfway uh, to the finish line of becoming a fully accredited participation, uh, participating museum of the American Alliance of Museums. And over the past few years, we have uh, made incredible strides in streamlining, streamlining, excuse me, of that process. Uh, and so that is a longer process, delivering um, the Pledge of Excellence, of uh, the core documents, as well as um, the other governing, managing, operational documents of the organization, um, as well as um, descriptions of programs and exhibitions uh, and artistic inclusion, et cetera, et cetera. So how does a museum participate? Simply sign up. Uh, there is no tier limitation. Of course, you know that the tiers at the American Alliance of Museums run from tier one all the way through to tier three, which is pay which you can participate as you need to participate. So any museum um, can step into the continuum of excellence. Um, and we envision DEAI being interwoven at each one of those steps. So for example, the current Pledge of Excellence does not explicitly mention inclusion uh, and diversity. We expect that the recommendation will be uh, that we talk explicitly around the Pledge of Excellence or to consider um, an explicit pledge of commitment to uh, work of DEAI in an institution. Um, at the second level, when we think about core documents, um, we think that there may be room to have a core document that is very similar to the diversity and inclusion plan that museums inside the museum community of learning uh, will be developing. And then, of course, in accreditation, uh, that same philosophy uh, will move through. Um, and I will say that one of the reasons we have a task force is because we want to be very mindful uh, in terms of the same way um, that there is a continuum and a spectrum of community engagement, which is also a requirement of the accreditation process. Museums have to define community engagement for themselves and what excellence looks like in that space. And we are working uh, to make room for that kind of self-actualization as we go through um, EAI as well. All right, so I'm 
looking over uh, some additional questions. Um, so I think this is this is important. I want to be sensitive to who we are. The question of is there a financial commitment to participating in this uh, project? We have worked with our founding funders um, to sponsor um, the needs of organizations who are participating. Um, I know that we have some folks on the line and who will be applying who have done some preliminary work in DEI, and it is quite daunting, actually, when you think through the process of getting the expertise. Um, all of that is sponsored through the program. Uh, and as I mentioned, um, if there is any cost associated, uh, it would be travel to the American Alliance of Museums uh, annual meeting um, in the May timeframe, if that's not already part of your museum practice. And I know many of you are already um, actively and engaged uh, in the Alliance, and so it's part of your museum practice now. Um, and we will work uh, to make um, a number of stipends available to um, travel uh, to that space. So there is no fee uh, to participate um, in any portion of the program that's included. Okay, so I'm continuing um, to look through um, the questions. I see uh, folks who are good and, and talking to each other, um, and many of the folks on the line are incredibly familiar um, and raring to go. So I know some folks will be perhaps leaving us a little early. So I want to point out um, we had a dedicated email um, to supporting and serving questions in this space, um, and that email is particularly active right now around our museum community learning. Uh, since this is that moment. Uh, that email address is spacingchange at aam-us.org. Uh, uh, and I also encourage uh, folks to feel free to reach out to me if you have very specific questions. And I am T. Matthews, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-S, at aam-us.org. Um, and we are looking forward um, to talking um, with folks who are interested in engaging. Um, as some of you, I'm sure, have stepped through the application, um, we really did try to keep the application simple um, and manageable uh, in terms of participating uh, in this um, process. And so we are asking um, about uh, some uh, statistical information on the size of your board, um, and the size of your organization, much of the way that we do for all of the AAM programs that we have organizations that individuals apply for. Um, and then we also have a few thought-provoking questions with the appropriate word limit to, again, reinforce that we really are trying to create an application um, that works um, as much for you as it does um, for us. One of the questions um, that has come up it, on both sides is, well, what if we're already, like, really working in this space? Are we still eligible? Um, and then what if we've done no work in this space and we just want to get started? Are we still eligible? I would say the answer to both of those questions is, is yes. Um, we are looking for museums that are on the spectrum uh, in terms of uh, the work that has been done um, in uh, the DEAI uh, space. Uh, and what we are actually looking for um, is a sign um, that museums will take this walk with us and commit to um, what will be in practice for the two and a half years, March with us through 2021, through the diversity and inclusion plan, through inclusive um, appointment of additional uh, board members. So uh, another question, how will data and and learning be shared with AM or more publicly. We are very excited about that and very committed. One of the things that we are looking to do is to codify the things that we can codify. So for example, if a museum right now comes to the American Alliance of Museums and say, hey, 
we've never had a disaster planning plan. Do you have any guidance? We do. We have examples and we have templates of that. So we are looking for um, the portions of the program, um, everything from perhaps a, a self-assessment by the board in terms of their readiness and, and where they are to think through this work, to how to create a board diversity and inclusion plan um, yourself. So we're hoping to do that kind of codification. Our fellows and our coaches um, will also be charged with um, populating our blogs and our magazines uh, with stories um, and uh, learning um, from what it is that we are doing. Um, particularly in terms of not everyone's journey to DEI is, is the same, um, but not everyone's journey to DEI is different. We are particularly interested in being able to communicate anything we see that's related to, say, the size of an organization. How does a big, big organization that has all this infrastructure move in this direction? As well as how does a little teeny organization that doesn't have a whole lot of capacity move in this direction? So we want to actually and actively be communicating that as well. As we enter the end of the grant, we will be actively soliciting, participating museums about their willingness to show off, right? Um, and to talk about the tremendous and amazing work that we have done, um, to talk about their uh, journeys, uh, both personally, professionally, and institutionally. So those are the ways we're thinking through um, training uh, that. Um, and then, of course, like any good organization, we are already looking to what the second generation of this work and this training would be. Scalability. Um, is a big question for us. And so that is also something that we're specifically learning, uh, looking to learn as we work with our 50 um, museums uh, in that space. So we are winding down. Uh, we have, of course, about 10 minutes of availability uh, left. And we are continuing to receive some questions through uh, the chat box, and uh, some questions um, have come. Uh, through uh, the email. Um, one of the, the questions that has come up is uh, how will the larger staff of the organization be engaged? I would say that engagement of the larger staff is not directly within the purview of this program for the American Alliance of Museums. That said, uh, individual museums um, may have their own ideas and we would encourage that in terms of how they will think through engaging the staff and the learning, um, particularly as it uh, pertains to working with subgroups and, and departments. Um, and what we actually hope uh, is that by going on this journey, um, our museum boards will become much more engaged and much more comfortable in the conversation around DEAI um, so that when it comes up, uh, and we're talking about audience engagement, and we're talking about changes in audience demographic, and when it comes up, and we're talking about diversifying our exhibitions, uh, that boards will become more comfortable um, and more informed uh, as they step into that space uh, so that they can um, become the wind beneath the wings of the staff of their organization um, that they are designed to create. Um, another specific question on how will the foundations be involved uh, specifically. Alluded to this a little bit before. Um, so the foundations have agreed uh, to clearly be engaged. Um, and some of you um, may recognize that in retrospect, we've actually seen several appearances already uh, as we were gearing up for this program. Uh, folks are very excited um, uh, in terms of what we're doing. And so their uh, engagement will range from everything to um, coming to uh, the community uh, gatherings uh, when we're bringing uh, full cities uh, together, to appearing at the AAN meetings, uh, for talking sessions, uh, meet and greet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we are um, quite confident that as we are making progress, uh, the foundations themselves will be putting out um, notices uh, and talking about um, our work and publishing our findings. One, uh, because it is what foundations do. Um, this is a significant investment on their part, for which we, of course, are very grateful. Um, and they, too, uh, made a lot of noise um, about this. Um, 
and we do expect for them to be uh, talking through the work that we're doing. Whether or not they will be publishing that in, uh, in the intermediacy, meaning on an annual basis or while we're in progress, that we do not know. Uh, and that will be um, part of what we learn. Um, I am seeing um, a, a question right now uh, about um, museums that have two things going to them. One, a fairly large board, uh, say 30 plus for me is a, is a fairly large board, but also has a board of advisors structure uh, that is even larger uh, than that. And so I think that as you're um, talking to us uh, in the application, uh, one, we are very specific in terms of thinking through board of trustees and board of directors because of the type of control that they have, right? They have fiduciary and governing control versus advisors have advisory control. We are specifically in our work targeting um, board of trustees have governing authority. That said, if you have a board of advisors that is strategically positioned as, say, a seeding ground for board of trustees, it is a way that you're using to engage a broader community, um, however you're defining a broader community. That is actually something for you to talk to us about, uh, perhaps in some of your, your questions. I wouldn't just add the two numbers together, so it looks like you have a board of you know, 105, um, because we may just immediately say, oh, we don't have capacity for 100 board members from one organization. But I think that um, the reasons that different organizations have various board of advisors uh, are um, a good indication and help us understand some of the preliminary work um, that's being done around creating a broader community. Okay, so I want to just um, reiterate uh, one last time. Uh, thank you in advance uh, for your commitment to this work. Um, the fact that you are actually on the, the phone or the computer with us right now um, is a sign uh, to uh, the commitment um, that you're doing. The number of questions uh, that came in is an incredible sign of the curiosity that's in this space. Very, very excited um, about that. Um, and this is an open invitation uh, to everyone who feels like their question wasn't specifically answered or answered in depth enough. Um, you can send us an email at facingchange at aam-us.org uh, or and directly to me at tmatthews at aam-us.org and that's two keys in Matthews. If you think your question is simple and straightforward, throw it in an email. If you're thinking, yeah, no, I need a phone call, please <laughs> put that uh, in, your, in your note as well. Um, as a reminder, you know, we've got time. The applications are due uh, in, uh, in the middle of May, um, but you know how those deadlines creep up on you. So um, good luck, and we encourage everyone um, to participate. Um, and this is um, an amazing opportunity um, for us to think through engaging ourselves and our boards in a different way in one of the most important conversations of our time. So thank you very much, and I look forward to hearing from all of you in one way or another. <laughs>